In this week's Climate Friday newsletter, we're going to take a special deep dive into the 2024 total solar eclipse. Now that February is upon us, we are just a little over two months away from the big day. Now, many of you may remember the 2017 total solar eclipse that was billed as the Great American Eclipse for many areas. Now, I've got some good news for those of you that live in Northwest Ohio. This one is going to be much more spectacular, and the impacts here at home are going to be memorable. So in this week's Climate Friday newsletter, we're going to break down the differences between 2017 and 2024 and talk about what you can expect in just a little bit over two months. If you're not already subscribed to that Climate Friday newsletter, head to WTOL.com slash email and we'll have the latest eclipse content over the next couple months on WTOL 11 plus online and on air. So let's dig into the data and talk about the differences between these two amazing spectacles and what you can expect as we round the corner towards the total solar eclipse. So we're going to break down those differences in a few different areas, the first of which is the pure impact. Now, not only are we going to see the direct impacts of totality here at home, but we are going to share that impact with 32 million Americans, and that is well over double what experienced in 2017. With the way the path of totality lines up this year, there are going to be many more metropolitan large cities that are in that path of totality. So overall, the impact is going to be much broader. Also, the duration. This total solar eclipse will bring some areas is four and a half minutes of totality, which is considerably more time to enjoy that total solar eclipse than we saw in 2017. Additionally, at the very tail end, we're going to talk about solar activity and how you may enjoy a little bonus treat with this total solar eclipse. So breaking down those differences between 2017 and 2024, one of the big hallmarks of this one is simply the width of the path of totality is going to be larger due to the proximity of Earth to the moon. And due to that wider path, we are going to see more metro areas areas and more population in that line of fire. Comparing the width 108 to 122 is the number of miles that path of totality spans this time around. And in 2017, it was a mere 62 to 71 miles wide. So naturally due to the wider path of totality, you're going to get more Americans that are able to experience this amazing spectacle. A wider path of totality is due to the fact that the moon's going to be closer to Earth this time around, and that will lead to more impacts and a broader effect nationwide wide. Additionally, with the way it lines up more metro areas and comparing the population in that path, 32 million versus 12 million in 2017. Now the time that totality lasts is going to be one of the key defining features as well. Some areas will peak at four and a half minutes in that totality, whereas in 2017 it was less than three minutes and that was the maximum that anyone experienced in the 2024 eclipse. Four and a half minutes, that is the peak, not in the United States, but Torreon, Mexico. Mexico is going to be the city that sees the longest duration of this total solar eclipse and Carbondale, Illinois. That was the sweet spot. That was the place to be in 2017, which interestingly is also going to be in the path of this year's eclipse, but with a longer duration of time. Now let's compare those tracks and some of the major cities that are in the line of fire. Um, you'll notice this southwest to northeast trajectory of the 2024 eclipse, and we have a more in-depth, closer to home view of that on WTOL.com, breaking down individual cities in our metro area. Now it's really perpendicular to the 2017 eclipse path, and not only was that path more narrow and less wide, but it didn't quite go through as many major metro areas, and the intersection there is going to be in southern Illinois and northeastern Missouri, where some folks are going to be in the path of both of them, 2017 and 2024. So the sheer number of population, this is largely one of the big reasons you're probably hearing so much on social media, on the news and online, is because 32 million Americans are going to share in this experience in that path of totality, and that equates to two and a half times the population of 2017. So it's a much bigger national spectacle and a much broader encompassing event due to that population that's enjoying it. And of course, the peak duration is also going to allow for a longer enjoyment of this very fleeting brief moment, whereas in 2017 in Carbondale peaked at less than three minutes. Now for us here at home, the most that we are going to see totality for is approximately three and a half minutes with Toledo being far less than that but that's still more than 2017 brought. Now here's a look at some regional cities across the Midwest that are going to enjoy totality for quite the duration of time. Cleveland and Indy close to four minutes in totality. Buffalo, New York, 345 and Erie, Pennsylvania, 342 in terms of how long they will enjoy totality. Now I mentioned Torreon, Mexico, because that is the sweet spot. That is the place to be where four and a half minutes long that totality will 
feel like quite a while compared to some of those other cities. Now, as we pan up towards the United States, Dallas and Little Rock are also going to be able to enjoy totality. And let's further expand that image to the north and east. Some regional cities, including Indianapolis and Dayton, are also going to be sharing in that experience of totality. And here at home, I mentioned check online for the specific number of minutes that you will see in your town or city. And here's a list of some across the region that will be enjoying totality, including Mansfield, upwards Cleveland and Akron, a good portion of eastern Ohio as well. Now, here's just a summary of some of the local cities that will be in totality with Forest, Ohio taking the cake. This final column here shows you the total time in totality close to four minutes in Forest. Finley and Ottawa are going to be well over three minutes, and you'll notice a lot of the imminent Toledo Metro for Lucas and Wood counties are going to be a little bit less. And it applies to Henry County as well. Napoleon less than two minutes, Defiance less than two minutes. Nonetheless, that is still going to be an incredible two minutes. And if you want to look at any more of this data, we have it online at WTOL.com with our exclusive Eclipse content. Now, in terms of some of the major metros, the big cities, they're going to be enjoying this totality. Here's a list at the top 10 biggest metros metropolitan areas, and I've just included the population of the city itself. Montreal in Canada, nearly 2 million people, they will be in totality. A lot of Texas cities are going to be able to enjoy this unique astronomical spectacle. San Antonio has 1.5 million people, Dallas 1.3, Austin, Texas has just shy of 1 million population, and Fort Worth just shy of 1 million as well. Here's some Midwest cities, though. Indianapolis, 882, Torreon there, and Durango. Now, Hamilton, Ontario is also going to be in the line of totality and another Mexican city there with a little over half a million in terms of population. So here's a map showing the top 10 most populous cities within that line of totality that spans all the way from Mexico up to southern Canada. Now, of course, we still do have some big cities here in the Midwest, including Cleveland, that will be in that line of totality. But simply looking at population, there's Montreal taking the cake at number one, San Antonio, Texas, number two, Dallas is number three, and Austin, Fort Worth, fall shortly behind. So a lot of Texans are going to be enjoying this total solar eclipse on April 8th. And as we head down towards Mexico, Torreon, that is the four and a half minute totality. And Durango is also another large city. And Mazatlan is another one finishing off the list at number 10. Now, last but not least, one of the most unique spectacles with this year's eclipse that differentiates it is the potential to see some solar flares during the eclipse. Now, essentially what a solar flare is, is magnetic energy that is released from the sun's atmosphere. And as the name implies, it's a little ejection or a little offshoot that looks like it's extending away from the sun. Now, due to the higher levels of magnetic energy this time around versus 2017, there is the potential to see solar flares. Now, ordinarily on a typical sunny day, those solar flares are tough to make out with the naked eye simply due to the fact that the sun's rays are so bright. But when the shadow of the moon blocks the sun, some of those solar flares can peek out the side and they are especially evident and even more visible than they would be otherwise. Now, this magnetic activity in the sun is going to actually reach a peak. Every 11 years, the sun's magnetic field flips. And as we look towards 2017, there was not nearly as much energy and activity going on. However, we could see solar activity that will be elevated on April 8th, 2024. And that raises the odds that we will see solar flares. And not to get too scientific with it, but coronal mass ejection, that is another term for those little offshoots that you may see coming out from behind the sun. Now in 2017, we were at a solar minimum. We did not have nearly as much solar energy and magnetic activity. This go around, we were at a solar maximum. So keep your eyes out for the solar flares. Of course, we also have a guide on how to safely view this total solar eclipse, what glasses to wear, and how you can ensure your optical health and safety as well. But this is something else you have to look forward to. In addition to the total time, in addition to the population that will be seeing it, we have the potential to see some solar flares as well. Now coming up in the Climate Friday newsletter over the next couple of months, we're going to be delving more in depth into the total solar eclipse and what you can expect. Welcome to the month of February. We're just a little over two months away from the total solar eclipse and we'll keep you updated on air, online and on WTOL 11 plus.